travels this area, make sure you let them know they're going to have to find an alternative. Of course, no word on when this closure might be lifted, but for the latest on traffic and other detours throughout the area, we're going to send it back over to Kyla Woods. Hey, Amanda, thank you so much for that update and good morning to you. Those of you waking up in that area, of course, that is a very uh, prominent area that's prone to closures when we're seeing high water or flooding. So you're probably not surprised with that closure being in place uh, and hopefully there won't be too many backups or delays on our alternates. If you're heading through there, you might want to use Kellogg or Riverside or if you're cutting from one of our eastern communities there in Anderson Township or Mount Washington, you may want to go ahead and use Kellogg because fortunately we don't have word of closures there on Kellogg near Coney Island. That's another hot spot uh, for high water, but you, that'll be a good alternate for you uh, if you are trying to travel uh, westbound from any of our eastern communities. 275 looks good for you here at the Combs Hill Bridge coming off of Kellogg, so traffic's still moving along pretty well in that area. Lisa and Mark. All right, Kyla, thank you. The danger extended into Roselawn. Way too many scenes like this for drivers. The roadways were impassable near Vine and Mitchell. The water has receded somewhat in that area, but Cincinnati's 4th District was hit especially hard in the storm. Many of you are going to be checking your car insurance to see what's covered as far as damages for your vehicles. And you can imagine the storms kept service workers very busy overnight. More than 2,000 customers in greater Cincinnati and northern Kentucky are still without power. At last check, most of them are in the Hamilton County area. A new one WLWT investigators looking into the cause of a fire at a glass plant in Greendale, Indiana. The fire started at Anchor Glass Company on Bellevue Road about 1030 last night. The damage was said to be in the back of the building. Crews were able to get it put out pretty quickly. No reports of any injuries. 606 right now a child recovering after his dad accidentally backed over him in their driveway in Harrison. It happened on Whipperwill Drive around 1030 Sunday morning. The child was rushed to Children's Hospital with unknown injuries. We are still working to learn the condition and the age of the child. The Cincinnati Bengals were down in the Sunshine State last night for a preseason tilt with the Jaguars. You may have watched the game live right here on WLWT. While the Bengals started out strong, they quickly lost steam. WLWT News Vice George Vogel has the report from Jacksonville. In that third preseason game, the Bengals fell to the Jaguars here in Jacksonville last night, 26 to 21, but there was a lot of positive. The negative, of course, is that final score and the fact that special teams demon Cedric Pierman broke his left forearm. A.J. Green, Adam Jones, also minor injuries, but they're expected to be okay for the season opener. The positive right here, Andy Dalton throwing the Giovanni Bernard, a beautifully executed play for a 19 yard touchdown to give the Bengals the early lead. And the Bengals were able to build on that. Later, it's Jeremy Hill going in for a touchdown. And the Bengals saw things like this happen with their frontline players, and that's what they feel good about. I felt good about a lot of things that happened. First part of the football game, first half of the football game. And uh, we got the offense, uh, I think, into some good situations. We got the defense. We got an opportunity to play a, uh, a one-minute drive there before halftime. I thought we did some good things. We moved the ball well, obviously. Um, you know, a quick touchdown on that the first drive we had, and then we had a long drive for, for um, you know, that second touchdown. So, um, moved the ball well. Thought, uh, thought our guys played hard. So yeah, it's a loss on the record, but quite honestly, for those frontline guys, it was a victory here in Jacksonville. The Bengals closed the preseason with a home game against the Colts on Thursday night in Jacksonville with the Bengals. I'm George Vogel, WLWT News Five Sports. And happening today, a tailgate to celebrate the countdown to kickoff. The Marvin Lewis Community Fund is teaming up with the Cincinnati Bengals for another year to host tailgate by the bite at Eddie Merlot's in Montgomery. There's going to be appetizers, craft beers, bourbon tasting, and specialty cocktails all served by Bengals players. Proceeds from today's tailgate benefit the Marvin Lewis Community Fund, which is a youth outreach program. Local Olympian makes a return to where it all started for her today. Bronze medal winner Rachel Adams will visit her alma mater, Mount Notre Dame High School. A pep rally is being planned by the school. At 9 o'clock this morning, Rachel will address the student body and take a picture with the entire school. When we continue this morning, tragedy on a highway in Louisiana. The new developments on a crash that left a fire chief dead and dozens injured on a charter bus. Plus flash flooding impacting a local senior apartment community while residents were forced to head to higher ground. 
Outside Live right now on your Monday. Hope it's a great start for you. Uh, sun is not making its way up just yet. It's a dark morning right now. Randy, good morning to you. Give it the next hour or so. <laughs> It'll look a whole lot different. It looks a lot different today than it did yesterday evening, but still the same general setup. So we'll have the potential for storms to pop up this afternoon. You should be muggy but dry for the morning rush. Lunchtime, 82 degrees, hot and humid. We'll make it to around 90, but second half of the day, a few towns, not as many will get hit with localized intense downpour. We'll take a close look at the timeline for that storm and when this fat pattern will finally break when we come back. Mark. All right, Brandy, thank you. Before we go to break, another look at how the heavy rain turned communities into swimming pools last night. This picture was sent to us from Christina Ann. This was the view from Observatory Avenue in Hyde Park. Remember, if you encounter high water, you should turn around and not try to drive through. You're waking up with Cincinnati's WLWT News 5 today. Stay with us. You're watching WLWT News 5, leading the way. And welcome back. This morning we continue to see the impact of the flash flooding. Residents at a Roselawn senior apartment community will be cleaning up after the flood water filled their homes. This was the scene at the Hillcrest Elderly Center on Lasanaville Avenue last night. People we talked to say when the water moved in, there was water up to their knees. I said, well, let me look out in the hallway just in case, because if the water it was raining so hard. I opened up the door and it just started pulling in. She said, grab the rug. And it was so much water out of there. I was telling her we need to go up to the upper level because we can't get out of so much water in the hall. What a frightening time. First responders went door to door checking on residents. The Red Cross is helping those impacted by the flooding. And since the first moments of the storm, viewers stay connected through social media. Heather Black and St. Bernard captured this video for us. Notice how fast the water is moving down the street, going halfway up the cars and SUVs parked in the path. Thankfully, not many drivers were out on this part of that roadway. Wow. A lot of areas you want to avoid, but that you have to avoid yeah. because they're shut down. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you, you really don't. And then so if you're not sure, like we weren't, I wasn't sure this morning about Kellogg. So mm -hmm. I typically take Columbia, knew it was closed. Right. Uh, I just went over to Five Mile, although so in the opposite direction, you know, if you're in Anderson Township or Mount Washington, you know, you usually Columbia or Kellogg. Right. But I went all the way to Five Mile just in case. But we haven't gotten any word of closures along Kellogg. So mm -hmm. that's the good news. Mm -hmm. That should be a good alternate for those of you heading out the door right now. Here's a look at our map. Still seeing green conditions for the most part. If you're hopping on to 471 this morning, 65 miles an hour. So seeing some pretty decent speeds there and five minutes to get you into downtown. So a clear start for you along that stretch of your uh, greater Cincinnati commute and hopping onto the Daniel Carter Beer Bridge. Traffic looks good heading into downtown. We'll keep you updated on your commute and that flooding as you head through the morning. Mark and Lisa. All right, Kyla, thank you. In today's top stories, an unlicensed, undocumented bus driver hits a fire truck on a Louisiana interstate, killing a district fire chief and injuring 41 others. This, the St. John the Baptist Parish Fire Department responded to an accident on I-10 near New Orleans Sunday morning. Three firefighters were standing at the scene when the bus driver hit their ladder truck, sending three of them over a guardrail and into the water below. The district fire chief was killed. Two other firefighters critically injured. Two other vehicles hit the bus, killing someone in one of those cars. The bus was carrying workers heading to the Baton Rouge area to assist with flood relief. The New Orleans Fire Department says the recovery effort is being mounted today for a small plane that crashed into a lake over the weekend. Crews hope the recovery will also wrap up the mystery of two men missing since the crash. A private boat rescued a woman. The cause of the crash is now under investigation. Moments of panic at LAX airport last night after reports of an active shooter. Many people remained calm, but some were running away from the terminal, clearly frightened. After sweeping the terminals, police say there was no gunman and no shots fired and that the scare came from loud noises. At a Scottish airport, two United Airlines pilots were pulled off a plane and arrested for suspected intoxication. It happened just before they were to fly 141 passengers from Glasgow to Newark, New Jersey on Sunday. The whole crew was replaced and the flight delayed 10 hours before leaving Glasgow, finally landing in Newark at 845 last night. If you are uncomfortable with a, a member of your crew, uh, you don't fly with them. The safeguards that are in place did in fact work. Two pilots getting on a plane drunk absolutely concerns me. 
United confirmed that the pilots aged 45 and 35 had been removed from service. Back to your forecast right now on this Monday at 618, 68 degrees. Let's check it right now with Randy. Randy, it's a uh, gosh, it's 68 degrees. <laughs> We're down incredible uh, temperatures from where we've seen in the past this early morning. Well, and you know what? You can expect big time changes later on in the week, but today kind of the same old, same old as far as what the forecast holds, the same as we had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So taking a look at the breakdown for your Monday, muggy but dry. Temperature wise, yeah, 68 degrees doesn't feel so bad. Lunchtime, hot and humid. And as we head through the afternoon, pop up downpours will once again be a possibility for us. Wherever they flare up, the chance will exist for some scattered rain on into the evening. The reason the forecast hasn't changed? Well, our setup has not changed very much. High pressure still in control over the Carolinas. Warm, muggy air getting pushed in from the south, and this stationary boundary has really been the problem for us for going on at least half a week, if not longer than that. This front is expected to wash out today, meaning it's not really going to be as big of a factor, but it hasn't washed out yet. So we still could potentially see showers and thunderstorms flare up, especially between Columbus and Pittsburgh. And anything that does pop up could spur kind of a ripple effect that heads down our direction this afternoon. Taking a look at the radar right now, this is a nice change of pace. We're looking dry here to start the day and temperature wise upper 60s to the low 70s, 74 in Loveland, 70 in Carrollton, but most places right now in the upper 60s. So we'll be looking for the potential for storms, but much like the last couple of days, it's all hit and miss style. Second half of the day, 90 degrees is where we'll be at 3 o'clock. It'll feel like 95 and the towns where the rain pops up. You're down in the 70s, right like that. So looking at our future cast as we head into the afternoon, you'll see scattered showers and thunderstorms kind of flare up off to our north and east and then filter down in our direction. So it's kind of counterintuitive to the way we usually see, see storms move in our direction, but look to the north and east later on this afternoon for storm development and that could trigger some stuff for us as well. So pop up storms possible this afternoon. Tonight will dip down to 67. Tomorrow looks like a dry day and there's slight relief from humidity as well. Showers and thunderstorms storms Wednesday night and then very comfortable as we head toward the upcoming holiday weekend guys. Randy, thank you. The national anthem controversy with an NFL star may just be beginning what he has to say to people upset about him sitting during the anthem. Plus, New York's Little League baseball team did something that the state hasn't done since 1964 win a World Series title, but the game cost one network covering the game the loss for ESPN. And a live look through our city cam. If you're traveling over the Daniel Carter Beer Bridge, seeing really great conditions there. But of course, we're dealing with closures in some parts of your greater Cincinnati commute. We have it all covered for you, and we'll check again after the break. Thanks for waking up with WLWT News 5 today. Good morning. Welcome back on your Monday. Hope it's a great start for you. It's 623, 68 degrees. We'll talk more about the flooding aftermath and what's to come today and for this new work and school week coming up. But first, new developments. Two brothers are charged with murder and the death of the cousin of NBA star Dwayne Wade. One man was on parole after serving time in prison on a gun charge. His brother is an own gang member. Nikea Aldridge was pushing her baby in a stroller on Friday when she was shot and killed. Police say she was not the intended target. A vigil was held Sunday in her honor. Controversy continues over San Francisco quarterback Colin Kaepernick's decision to sit during the national anthem. The NFL star says he has no plans to stand unless some Something changes. Kaepernick is speaking out about police brutality against minorities. He made his first public appearance today during a team practice since making that stance. He says he is unfazed by the backlash. The fact that it has blown up like this, I think is a good thing. You no, know, it brings awareness. Everybody knows what's going on, uh, and this sheds more light on it. Now, I think people are really talking about it. The NFL says while it encourages players to stand during the national anthem, there's no policy that requires them to do so. It's too late to do anything now, but a certain sports network may want to rethink where it puts one of its cameras at next year's Little League World Series. For the second time, a Little Leaguer did some major league damage to an ESPN camera. A foul ball smashing right into the lens. He's ready for the close-up. On Thursday, a pitch bounced and nailed 
in front of a camera in the same position. New York's Little League baseball team took the title last night from Seoul, South Korea, 2-1, to one, your final score. And uh, I don't think, is it the camera that's frozen? Yeah, that looks like the camera, huh? The first time it was the, it was the, 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 plastic. the plastic on top yeah. of it. That one looks like, well, they had to remove the plastic because the first, the, the wild pitch hit it, and then obviously it probably yeah. was a little off. Uh, Exposed. Yeah. yeah, something may have hit. Uh, yeah, the, the uh, camera operator. Oh, got it. Yeah, you're looking into that after Ouch. all. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, you are. Ouch. <laughs> I showed it again behind you guys. I'm like, Ooh. All right. Well, you know what? We had a bit of a rough weekend. If you just straight up look at the stats from CVG, it really didn't look that bad. Friday had a trace of rain. Saturday a smidge there, uh, barely over measurable at two. Uh, one hundredth of an inch and then yesterday uh, 0.82 inches. However, it was all hit and miss style. So Friday evening, if you're out of high school football, you know we had lightning delaying and canceling the games. Lots of downpours Saturday afternoon. A line of wind damage with 60 mile an hour winds knocked out a lot of power. And of course, yesterday the flash flood emergency. So a rough weekend. If you take a look, though, at this coming weekend, things are going to be a lot better. Big changes coming our way for the end of the week and for Labor Day, guys. All right, Brandy, thank you. When we continue this morning, four teenagers attack a man and take his bike. The details on the attack and the effort to, put to, to find the teens responsible. Last night's rain means a day off school for kids in some districts. Coming up, a look at the mess left behind and how schools are dealing with it. It's next here on WLWT News 5 Today. Heavy rain plagues Greater Cincinnati. The traffic trouble caused by flash flooding in the areas you should avoid on your way to work. Plus, the list of school closings because of flooding continues to grow. The damage that has school officials making some tough decisions. And the Dixie Heights community says goodbye to a former football star. The funeral today for Colson Macklin. This is WLWT News 5 Today. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Hayes. I'm Lisa Cooney. We have team coverage for you on the heavy rain and flooding last night and how it is impacting people this morning. Yeah, we have uh, all the elements covered for you this morning. Kyla keeping an eye on the roads. Andrew and Amanda out surveying the damage out and about around town. And Randy's here now with a look at our forecast. Randy, good morning. Well, good morning. I know a lot of you are probably expecting all of our friends there, all of our reporters out in the field to be covered in uh, galoshes and rain gear. But the good news is the floodwaters have receded in most places. Sunday night, though, torrential rain in some, but not all parts of town. Check out Norwood, the league leader here in rainfall yesterday, 4.4 one inches all of that falling in less than two hours but if you check the official record books from yesterday it'll just say 0.82 because that's how much was registered at CVG so you can see most places saw at least some rain out of this some places didn't see anything at all as we take a look at that bullseye just to the north and northeast of downtown Cincinnati downtown had about an inch and a half or two inches but then three and a half four inches very common from Golf Manor Bond Hill St. Bernard over to Oakley Norwood specifically and down to to Evanston. Right now, a much drier start to the day. It probably won't stay dry for everybody, though. I would expect muggy conditions and temperatures in the upper 60s when you head out the door. Hot and humid weather this afternoon will top out near 90. And once again, into the afternoon and evening, pop of thunderstorms are going to be a possibility. We'll take a closer look at the timeline for that here in just a few minutes. Let's check the roads now. Kyla, nice to see most places are open. Oh, Lisa, sorry. That's okay. We're going to do that right now. Kyla, bring us up to date. Hey, Lisa. Well, we are dealing with uh, mostly clear conditions on the interstates. That's where we want to start our check. Of course, we have some closures, most specifically along Columbia Parkway, and we're going to check in with Amanda Kelly coming up in just a few moments. But right now, outside 71 here at Montgomery uh, or Mesa Montgomery and Fields Ertle. If you're traveling to or from parts of Warren County this morning, again, traffic looking good there and really on our interstates. It's Columbia Parkway that we're dealing with our most significant closure. It is closed at or between Torrance and Delta. Many of you traveling to or from our eastern communities use this in the morning, so I'm going to suggest Kellogg or Riverside. Fortunately, we're not seeing the closures along Kellogg that we sometimes see when we have this type of high water and flooding. So Kellogg and Riverside are going to be your best alternates. Let's talk about why. We want to check in with uh, WLWT News 5's Amanda Kelly live on the scene there at Columbia Parkway, and we're seeing those significant closures behind you there. Amanda. 
Well, good morning, Kyla. Actually, just within the last minute or two, some good news for drivers who take the Columbia Parkway into the city for work. I'm going to step out of the way so you can see behind me here. Those barriers are out of the way and the road is reopened. Now that just happened again within the last few minutes. We've been telling folks all morning this area has been shut down because of flash flooding. Now, throughout the evening, we had a closure here from where Torrance and William Howard Taft intersects with the Columbia Parkway all the way down to Delta. That's because flash floods took over this roadway. We had rocks and mud all over. We saw throughout the evening several crews working to clean up that mess because they know how important this road is for folks making their way into the city. They worked hard throughout the early morning hours trying to clean that all up and just within the last few moments that is now open so folks who use the Columbia Parkway to get to work that is now um, open and you are good to go. Now there were some uh, areas over nearby on the Norwood lateral some dangerous moments for drivers as well there last night. One car was nearly swallowed by the rushing water. Jillian snapped this image for us. We also had Ashley Beam sent us this photo of rushing water on a road out in Adams County. Again, the major headache for drivers was going to be the Columbia Parkway being shut down through the morning commute. But that now we can tell you folks good news that has just reopened. Obviously, still be cautious as you take your way into work this morning. There might be a little bit of debris still out there, but crews have cleared up the major stuff that was on the roadway here, and it is now open here. We are live along the Columbia Parkway this morning. Amanda Kelly, WLWT News 5.